Okay, here's everything I use to make the candles. Uh, of course, you need dragon's blood, and I will get a chunk and show you how much I need of that. Once I grind it up in the mortar and pestle, you'll need a mortar and pestle. These are the candle wicks that I use. You'll need dragon's blood uh, fragrance oil. You'll need some candle dye, red candle dye. You may or may not choose to use something that will measure out these smaller units for you. I'm not going to use it this time, so this is not necessary. This is just if you want to keep track of exact recipes. I have these uh, votive molds. You can see they each come with a little centerpiece and that's to leave a hole in your candle where you can put the wick through. And then you'll need a some sort of little pot that you're going to put a little bit of water in to help melt the wax that will be in this. I do recommend getting a melting pot so that you're not ruining um, any other good pots you may have. And it already comes with a, the plastic handle to keep it cool when you're pouring and the spout to help you with pouring. Let's see what else. Also, you do, let me get this to focus, you do want a thermometer. Pouring and adding your fragrance oils at the right temperature is pretty key to getting them to turn out well. Here's the wax I use. It's a paraffin blend. I got it off of Amazon and I'm going to measure out um, two pounds of it. You don't need two pounds. You could do like one pound, but I'm going to do two pounds. Okay, so I've got my two pounds of wax beads in here. And I'm going to put them in this pot with some water. Go ahead and turn that on. And I'll let that melt down a little bit and then I'll be ready to add the rest of the stuff we need, the fragrance oil and the dye. Alright, so when this gets I'll melt it down and gets into this green area there. Let me zoom in. To about 175. That's where you want to add your fragrance and dyes, and then you can pour it at when it gets down to 170. So over here I've um, ground up the amount of dragon's blood. that I think I'll want. That's probably, I don't know, probably about two tablespoons. I probably won't need that much, but I'd rather have more than I need than not enough. If you don't want to do all this and you don't want to get big chunks of dragon's blood, you could probably buy a small pouch of already ground up dragon's blood, probably on Etsy or Amazon or someplace like that. So don't feel like you have to do all this or invest in that much dragon's blood. You know, there's more uh, economical ways of doing this just to let you know. Okay, so I'm going to let the wax melt down and then we'll add our fragrance and our color and then I'll show you how I lay in this resin from the dragon's blood. Okay, while well that's melting, uh, a couple things I forgot to mention. You'll want some kind of craft paper, newspaper, something you can put down to kind of protect your countertop from the mess. It'll make for easier cleanup later. And you'll want um, something to stir and blend in your fragrance and dye. I use this metal skewer, and I find this works best. It's, you know, it's long enough for 
to get down into the pot and really mix things up really well and it's easy to clean up. So those are two things that I wanted to mention before we go any further. <laughs> okay, so it's just about down to 180. This is the perfect time to add my dye and my fragrance. The dye I have recommends using seven drops to get the darker red color, but I know that it needs actually a little bit more. I think I add nine, it might be a little bit more, we'll have to see. And then for the fragrance oil, where is it? Yeah, this is 30 milliliters and so I only need 15 milliliters for two pounds of the wax. So this is half a bottle so I'll just go ahead and pour this in. I'm going to add those two things and um, then I'll show you how it looks. And then I'll show you how I layer up the dragon's blood with the candles. Okay, so I ended up adding 18 drops for two, for two pounds of wax. So this called for seven drops for one pound of wax. So I used nine, pound, uh, nine drops per pound of wax just to let you know. And then I put the wax back on to make sure it got up to temperature for the, oops, to make sure it got up to temperature for the fragrance oil, which you want it to be at 175, and that's where it is now, so I'm going to take it off the heat again, and add my fragrance oil, and then we'll pour the candles. Okay, so I filled all of these roughly halfway or a little over halfway. And I'm going to let them set, not completely, but just till there's a little bit on top where you'll be able to see. I'll show you what it looks like to where it's set just enough that I can sprinkle the resin onto the candles. And then once it's completely set, then I'll layer at the second half and do the same thing. So I'm going to let these set for a little bit, and then when they're ready, I'll show you um, kind of what they should look like when you're ready to add your resin. Okay, I think you can see how they're starting to develop a little bit of a, sort of like a skin to them. So they're just starting to harden up. That's when you want to sprinkle your resin around on the candles. It'd be uh, pretty hard for me to do this the way I do it and hold the camera at the same time. So just to let you know, I roughly take about, about a teaspoon, give or take, sprinkle it around each candle while this is setting, let it set completely, and then come back and do it again. So I'll show you what they look like once I get the resin on. Okay, so here you can see um, the resin sprinkled on. I mean, it's just sort of like sprinkling cinnamon on cinnamon toast, you know what I mean? <laughs> and I used actually um, like less than one teaspoon. And you're just, you know, let me see. I use two hands when I do it because it gets, I get a more even thing. But, you know, you're just sprinkling them around or sprinkling the resin around and um, kind of creating like a little coating. Oops, there you go. For each candle. And then once it's all set, I'll come back and do it again. And of course you could do this with any, you know, any resin that you like, any herb that you like. You could do these candles so many different ways. But these are one of my favorites, so this is why I thought I would just go ahead and show you how I do it, because I needed to make a new batch anyway. Alright, so I'll let these set. We'll come back and do it again, let that set, and then we'll pop them out and I'll show you what they look like. Alright, the candles are set enough to go ahead and top them off now. I of course needed to reheat the wax, you just needed to get it up to, hopefully, I don't know if you can see it on here, but there we go. You want to get it up to like 170, between 170 and 175 to pour, okay? 
So I'm going to go ahead and top these off and show you what they look like. Okay, so after topping these up a second time, you can see they've, um, I don't know if you can see on camera, but they've depressed a little bit. So, and that happens quite often when they cool down completely. So I'm going to top them off again one more time and do the same thing. All right, here we go. I've got the wicks in. I just need to trim them down. And I have enough wax left over to make about three or four uh, more of these voto size candles. So I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you're having a great day or a great evening, whatever the case may be. And I'll see you soon. Bye.